One of the most sophisticated accessories by far for my side-by-side -side UTV project was the Switch Pro RCR Force 12, 12 switch panel power system from Switch Pros. My name is Dave Tim from Guns and Tactics and thank you guys very much for spending a few minutes of your day checking out my review of this product. Now, first things first, industry disclosure. I did reach out to Switch Pros, told them about my project. I said, hey, I think the RCR Force 12 would be a really good fit for my project, controlling all of my accessories, here's what I wanna do. Uh, are you interested in working together? Now they did give me a discount. It gave me basically like wholesale pricing. So I did not get anything for free. They're not paying for this review. Everything that you're gonna hear is my honest and upfront opinion because there are things I really like and there's one thing that I think does need improvement which you'll hear about. Now this video is part of a series on my ultimate range UTV or side-by-side -side project. If you like what you're seeing, make sure you check out the playlist or head on over to gunsandtactics.com once all the videos are uploaded. That article will be a one-stop show shop for all of the videos, a little bit more information, and links to all of the stuff used in this video series. Now, real quick, what it comes with out of the box is it does come with your wearing harnesses, it comes with the power control assembly itself, and then it does come with the switch panel, which kind of controls the power control. It tells the power controller like, hey, turn this on, do this, do that. Now, what I really liked about Switch Pros in general was a nice clean interface versus a bunch of rocker switches. With rocker switches, I generally probably would have had to run relays, fused sources, things like that. The Switch Pro, while expensive, because MSRP on the Switch Pro RCR Force 12 is $980. It is available through them. I'll throw a web page up there. Uh, so yeah, it's a lot of money, a thousand bucks basically for all this electrical. But for me, it was not just the ease and peace of mind of having sealed solid state power module that's waterproof, weatherproof, and I don't have to worry about relays, I don't have to worry about fuses and everything like that. It has up to 150 amp capacity, but it was also just the, the sleekness of that switch panel and the programmability of the backlit lights and the little stickers that you could put on there. So for me, it was all about everything, but it was by far the most expensive accessory for the side-by-side. -side. And would I do it all over again? Yep, I absolutely would. I, I really do love it. It's probably one of the coolest things as far as just controlling everything electrical. Now, real quick, some stats. It is a 12 user programmable switches, and I'll talk a little bit about the programming here in a second. Uh, and they are touch switches. So either they can be like a burst, a click on, click off. It, it's actually really cool. They have little stickers that you can put over it for pretty much everything. They don't offer custom labels. However, you can pretty much find whatever you need on the sheets that they included. So I had no issues with that. 150 amp capacity with 17 outputs. So you might be thinking, well, why does it have 12 switches but 17 outputs? Well, you can program one switch to do more than one output. So you have more outputs than needed. And what I really liked is that four of the outputs are rated up to 35 amps. So if you have high power devices like light bars or stereo systems, things like that, you have four circuits that can do that. You have one circuit that can also double with uh, two outputs to do 30 amps, and then you have 11 outputs that are rated to 15 amps, which will pretty much cover everything else. Now, you also do have one additional low side driver switch rated at two amps if you had like a low LED or something like that. I ended up not using it. As far as for the full specs, if you really want me to sit here and read off their webpage, I can certainly do that. However, I would just recommend you go to their webpage. You can see their full specs and you can get all that technical information. I'm assuming that you came here to hear about my user experience, how I set it up and what I think of the product versus just read you the webpage. Page. The module itself does have Bluetooth, which is how you connect it to the app, which is how you program it. Switch Pros does give you great instructions that are included that pretty much go over everything that you're going to need to. They do include some brackets, some basic supplies, and of course the parts and components which I've already shown you. Now I wanted to mount mine definitely well underneath the hood front fender area so it would be waterproof, weatherproof, it would be definitely out of the elements, not worried about it. And I also wanted to mount it at a little bit of an angle so in case water or something did get in there, that little bit of an angle would help gravity, you know, displace that water and run it out versus, you know, sitting it upright and having it cupped in to collect water, which is not a good idea. So I did make a bracket or a board, if you will, out of a piece of Kydex or polycarbonate. I can't remember what exactly it is, but I made that to fit. I put some nut certs in the frame in the front hood area, and then I also added all of my ground panels to this little custom panel. So all of my grounds could go into one place that was grounded to the battery. All of the power was right there to harness into the power control module. 
And then it was a short, quick plug to the switch panel itself, which I mounted to a panel on the dash to replace the safety advisory, which let's be honest, nobody ever reads those directions anyway. Once I got everything all installed and set up sleek or whatever, then came to programming. Now, one thing I will say up front is have a plan. Definitely think ahead of all your output. So every device that I had, every accessory had a number and that number was assigned to it through the whole project and that number also mostly coordinated with how it was going to be programmed or the output associated with the Switch Pro. So output number one I knew was going to be my high power light bar. Output number two was going to be the ultimate color of the high power light bar. Five was a turn signal, six was a turn signal, and so on. I even made a little schematic kind of showing how I was going to wire everything, how I was going to run all the wires, and then I had a list of all my outputs, how I was going to program it, how I was going to lay out the panel, and again, I planned that all ahead of time so that proper planning led to performance, pop, I don't know, proper plan, whatever the P rule is, I can't remember what it is, but I did proper planning so I had a good professional end product. Good enough for me. Now, going into setting up and wiring and soldering, all that stuff was pretty straightforward. I soldered everything using these uh, terminal heat shrink connectors, which I'll guys will show you a clip of that, but these things worked out good. I did end up soldering early on, but these things just worked out really good as a nice weatherproof solid connection. That led to programming. Now here's where I will say, you could program it all through the the Switch Pro itself, however the app makes it so much better. But one thing I didn't like about the app is that you had to go into different areas of the app to do different things. What I would really like to see is basically the app show a picture of the Switch Pro and I go into programming mode and I could click on that Switch 1 for example and it would basically just say, what do you want this to do? Do you want it to be a simple on off? Do you want it to be a momentary? Do you want it to be an on, on, off, you know, all of the different functions. Whereas how the app is set up right now, if I go into programming outputs, I go into one section of the app and I basically assign single outputs. But if I wanted it to be an on, on, off, meaning turn on accessory one, then turn on accessory two, and then off, that was in a different area of the app, which again was kind of quirky. Uh, other parts of the app, it only shows you like four switches at a time, then you have to hit next, then you have to hit next, then you have to hit exit, but it's not where the other exit button was. So again, a little quirky there. I would just like to see an improved graphic user interface on the app. So you switch, you click on the one switch and you can decide what you want it to do and which outputs you want it to do. And then when you hit exit, it does that. Same thing, you, you know, go to a different switch. Now the app actually does give you a lot of options. You can program switches to be momentary. You can program switches to be on off, like I said, or on on off. So you can program different levels of outputs. So for my reverse pods, I have it on one switch. First click is the rear light bar reverse lights. Second click is the rear light bar reverse lights and the pod. So it's kind of like a high low. And then the next one is off. You can do strobe, you can do wig wag, you can do turn signals, you can do steady strobes. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities. The one thing I also would really like it to see is maybe like an alternating strobe for people that are using it for like warning lights. I haven't figured out if it can do that yet, uh, but it does work out pretty slick for all of the functions I wanted to do. It controls my turn signals, it controls my mirrors, it controls the rear stuff. It has a trigger system to control the third brake light that I have in the rear light bar. So I have the Switch Pro set up. So when trigger one senses power from the brake light lead that activates that power output to my third brake light, there's a slight delay, but it works out just fine. And then you can also control different switches to be sensitive to whether the key is on or off. So most of my accessories, if you push the button on the Switch Pro, the accessory doesn't turn on. However, certain accessories like dome lights, cargo lights, or maybe like the outside mirror lights or whips, I wanted those to be able to be turned on no matter what. Let's say I didn't have the key in the ignition, it was in my pocket, but I quick wanted to turn on the cargo light. Since the Switch Pro is ran directly to the battery, boom, I can hit the cargo light button and the cargo lights turn on regardless of the key status. However, if I were to hit my light bar button without the key in the on position, it's not gonna work because I don't want that high output device to drain my battery. All in all, I have to say, again, most sophisticated, coolest accessory is the RCR Force 12 from Switch Pros. You can learn more about Switch Pros by heading over to their webpage, which is switchpros.com. Again, I'll put a link in the description. If you do click on the Amazon link and you end up purchasing, it will help out the channel a little bit, so I do appreciate that. If you have any questions about 
the Switch Pro product experience installation, whatever, go ahead and sound off in the comment section below. If you have any comments or questions about my UTV series in general, you can also hit those up in the comment section or send us an email at theqa at gunsandtactics.com. That'll come to me, whether it's UTV or firearms related questions. If you guys enjoyed the content, I really would appreciate it if you like, share, and subscribe. We are trying to grow, and we need your help to do that. Thank you guys very much for watching, and have a great day. We work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.